I was brought up in a very big family. I'm one of nine children and my parents weren't wealthy people. And um, it became apparent to me and my brothers and sisters, I've got four brothers and four sisters, that one way to make sure we had a better chance in life than our parents was to get an education. Because my parents, of course, were born in the 1930s um, and there's dire poverty, no welfare state, um, no health, no health care. Children died, many children died in, when, in childbirth, women died in childbirth and, um, and their lives were blighted by poverty. Then came the war, terrible war, everything destroyed. But at least after the war, Europeans got together and they realised that this should never happen again and we created welfare states. And I think uh, my experience as a child was the beneficiaries of that welfare state. That changed after the first, Second World War when we realised that we had to invest in education, in health for all, not just for those who could afford it. And that for me, I, I went into politics, I started when I was 17 in politics, and I think now I'd like, we want every child in the world to have the benefits of a welfare state. We have the sustainable development goals and we're talking about getting everybody universal health care. And these are very important things to me. They're what brought me into politics. And um, I'm hoping that this next 15 years of development policy will bring more benefits like the ones I had the opportunity to have to children across the planet. Since I became the chair of the committee in, in July 2014, it kind of coincided with the refugee crisis. And um, this has become a number one issue in terms of children who are getting lost from the system. I met a young man in my constituency in Sheffield from Somalia who um, left Somalia to live in, in Ethiopia and spent 17 years in a refugee camp. And he told me he missed his entire education. And what Save the Children have been doing, as I've learned in the last 18 months, is providing children with education, working in refugee camps, and I've seen that for myself at first hand. And really, when you see those children in those refugee camps, you realise that, like any other children anywhere in the world, they want to live in security. They want to have an education. And Save the Children helps them to have that. I've, I've seen schools in, you know, in, in conditions where... You know, those children have seen terrible things, but the school is a pleasant environment, and Save the Children does that work. And they also lobby politically to get money to make sure that can happen. And, um, and luckily, in the EU, we've listened to that lobby, and along with other NGOs, they asked us to increase the budget for children in refugee camps uh, for education. And it's gone up now last year. We set a target of 2019, the socialist group, to um, increase the budget to 4%. But thanks to cooperation with the NGOs, with the European Commissioner, we did it in one year. So it's gone up to this year massively and we're going to put down budget amendments again to do it again. And when we talk about SDGs, we talk about between now and 2030 and leaving nobody behind. Leaving no child behind should be central to what we do in the next 15 years. And the work in the refugee camps is part of that work to make sure that those children who, um, who've had to leave their homes, who've had to see terrible things, at least can have something to fall back on. And hopefully when peace comes back to their countries, can go forward and become productive members of their own societies and create a better world, which we, I think at the moment we all realise we desperately need to have a better world.